Apologies in advance for putting this song in your head, but it's just too perfect. So the main point of this talk is documenting props, for both for humans and for computers, props being prop types. Goals are human readable, and then runtime checks, of course, and then static analysis. So props are the primary way that, the primary interface and API from, for components to get their configuration data. Except for context, it's 99% of the way that your communication comes down. So it's super, super important. And if, you have to, if you're given an arbitrary chunk of code and you need to sort of reverse engineer it from the render function, good luck. You know, just finding the names of the props, their types, whether they're required, super, super hard. Yes? OK, thanks. OK, so reverse engineering props, if they're not documented, is super, super hard. And it's a huge waste of time for everyone. So if you're a component author, you don't want people to waste their time and use your component incorrectly. You don't want to have bugs. So you need to document your props. Um, so there's actually a lot more here than there were on the previous slide. So the old way of doing props was prop types, which has been moved out to its own NPM module. Um, part of that is for, of course, bundle size, that it doesn't belong in core React because it's only for dev. But also, flow is, is arguably more expressive than prop types. But in the old prop types way, you'd have a component, and you'd add your static prop types, get, name your props, give the, the data types whether or not they're required. and and then that get, what's that, what that gets you is, is you're servicing both the, the end user or the human reading your props, as well as you get runtime checks. So if you leave off greeting, which is required, you get a runtime check, which is OK, but you, know, you still have to run the code in order to do the check. So it's limited value, but it's better than nothing. At least you've told the, the consumer, the person, what they need to pass you. Um, so, so that's just what I just said. You get human-readable docs and runtime checks with prop types. But what about static type checking? If you use Flow or TypeScript, and I'm going to talk about Flow because that's what I know. I don't really know TypeScript. Um, you can do static analysis on your whole code base, catch errors without running it. So it's a lot faster. It's a lot more reliable than, than doing runtime checks. So there's Flow, flowtype.org. Um, so the equivalent of what I showed previously is this. You, you define a, a flow type, you pass it in in the, the angle brackets as props, and the question mark means that something is optional, it's not required. So this basically does the same thing. And so I have down bottom, it's set to, to automatically check flow when the code changes. So if I take out greeting, which is the same thing as we saw before, it will detect the, the missing prop without actually running the code. So that's the static analysis part of it. And better, better yet, first and last are not required, but if you throw a two uppercase on there, you know, you're basically going to get a you know, null pointer exception. Undefined is not a function because they're possibly null. So flow can detect that and say method cannot be called and possibly undefined value. So Without even running the code, it can find those type of errors and do deep chain data flow analysis across your, your code base and give you really high confidence in your code and rule out a lot of runtime errors, which is, which is massive. Um, and on Flow, on our CI server, we run Flow. It runs the whole pretty sizable code base in, in nine seconds. So there's a binary called Flow bin, which is super easy to, to integrate. So, so here's the differences, basically. Um, flow gives you the static analysis. Um, prop types gives you runtime. Wouldn't it be nice if we could check that, that other box on Flow and get runtime analysis? So basically, gen generate the prop types from the Flow definitions. And of course, the answer is yes. Um, Babel plugin React Flow types to prop types. And this is by the James Kyle. Uh, there's another plugin, I think, with a very similar name, but but James Kyle is a, is a Babel contributor, so I figure this is a safer bet, most likely. So you add it to your plugins in your Babel RC, and it magically, it magically you know, is given your AST and does code generation. 
And if we wanted to see if this is really working, you turn off source maps in Chrome, and then if you add a de debugger statement to your code, here we define our, our flow types, pass them in, and then add a debugger. And then this is what, this proves that it's generating your prop types dynamically from your flow definition. So you, you've dried up your prop types. You have one source of truth. You're not expressing the same concept in multiple ways. So yeah, you basically get human readable. You get runtime checks. And for me, the runtime checks, what we do is in Selenium, we, we scrape the, the JavaScript console logs for missing prop type errors because that's more real world of the actual data being, being pumped into your components from the back end, from real back end data versus you know, whatever test harness, which of course is perfect. Um, so the runtime, there really is benefit from there as well. I think most of the bang for the buck is the human and the static analysis in terms of preventing errors. So in summary, in my opinion, you have to document those props if you know, more than one author is on the project. And until we're all using ReasonML or Elm or some, something where it's impossible to get type errors, you might as well leverage those, that type information and, and enforce it. That's it. Thanks.